Hi guys and welcome back to Back Beyond Tech. This is just a really quick um, vloggy style news update. I was just surfing the internet and noticed some news about AMD's Radeon RX 490 and I thought well, let's check it out. So um, there's a few new things and nothing shocking I wouldn't have thought. I mean the most interesting thing for me is the fact that they've actually come out and talked about um, raw compute power in terms of uh, teraflops. So what they're saying basically is that the RX 490, uh, which is on the Vega architecture, is going to give you roughly, they think, around 10 teraflops of raw compute power, as opposed to the RX 480, which is on the, the current Polaris architecture and gives you around 5.9 teraflops. Now, that's no bad thing for AMD. Um, to be honest, they need something at the high end that's going to compete with the likes of the GTX 1080 and the 1070 that are just absolutely soaking up that kind of high-end tech enthusiast level market. I mean, I don't really think many people seriously consider a Titan. I mean, I wouldn't consider a Titan, but I would consider a GTX 1080 for sure. Um, so I don't think they need to worry about con um, competing with things like Titans anyway. So that's interesting. The, from a raw compute point of view, that's really cool that they're essentially doubling the raw compute performance that an RX 480 is giving consumers at the moment. Now, the other interesting thing about that is, if it's true, is that it's going to slightly edge out the GTX 1080. Although, with compute power, or you also have to take into account, you know, obviously IPC, core clock speeds, boost speeds, things like that. You know, so it's just not down to that one teraflop number. Um, although that's a good thing for for, for AMD, definitely. The next interesting thing as well is that they've also announced or it's been leaked that um, it's going to come with 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory as opposed to the NVIDIA using 8 gigabytes of GDDR5X. Um, while the HBM2 is a lot faster in theory and a 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer is a lot bigger, it should be better for larger applications and 4K and rendering and things like that with the Fury cards that were using HBM1, although they were only had a four gigabyte VRAM buffer, there wasn't really a huge performance bump in comparisons to the 980 or the 980 Ti that were just using GDDR5. So I'm kind of not sold on the memory issue yet. The other issue I have with that is that, you know, Micron have had real problems upscaling their manufacture. Uh, and if AMD don't want to be caught in the same situation that NVIDIA were, where basically NVIDIA's process for Pascal hadn't been, you know, it wasn't as efficient as it could be, so therefore they could not manufacture enough silicon to mass produce these high-end cards like the 1080 and the 1070, they're going to find themselves in the same position where they're essentially launching a product on paper, which is fine if you're a company like NVIDIA and you've got a huge amount of success behind you for the past few years. Um, and people are probably willing to put up with that. But if you're AMD and you're constantly playing catch up as they have been for the past sort of five years or so, I don't know if consumers are gonna take that from them. Um, I would certainly expect that when the RX 490 launched in the UK, for instance, I would be able to just go to a shop and buy one there and then, and I wouldn't have to worry about, oh my God, you're only gonna have 30 in stock or back ordering things or something like that. So. They need to be careful about that, and that's my concern with Micron, is they're the only people manufacturing HBM2 at the moment. As far as I'm aware, I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, they're the only people manufacturing it. So those are the two real new things that have come out about it, the, the raw compute power and, and the VRAM there. Um, the other interesting thing, I suppose, is price. Where is the RX 490 gonna sit in price compared to the GTX 1080? I mean. These cards are both going to be going for the same consumer. They're going to be both aimed at the same level within the tech enthusiast uh, group. So it'd be interesting to see what AMD do. It would be great if this card came out at around $500 to $600 undercutting the GTX 1080. Um, I think that's what AMD will do. Um, although they may just think, you know, fuck it, we're going to go with, you know, as much money as we can get for this, you know, the other thing to remember is like HPM2 is expensive. All the components that are going to be going onto this card are expensive. So I don't know 
what AMD's pricing strategy is going to be. Um, I certainly expect them to try and undercut Nvidia. That's generally been their pricing strategy in the past, so I don't see why they would change it now. But guys, that's it. Um, just a little bit of news there. Just saw this and thought I'd just do a quick kind of vloggy style video while I've got the webcam out. So I hope you liked the video. I hope it was informative. Um, I hope it was entertaining. <laughs> don't know about that. But guys, if you liked the video, like the video. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Um, don't forget to comment and subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, your views and your comments are really important to me. It keeps the, keeps the support rolling and keeps me doing this. So take it easy, guys, and I'll catch you in another great tech video soon. Bye now.